everyone, it's Michael Dougal. During this video, I'm gonna update you on our real estate market here. We are in the middle of COVID. I'm shooting this video April 11th, 2020, which means agents are forced to work at home. So little Onyx here wanted to introduce himself, say hi. And let's get into the video. I'm gonna answer some very commonly asked questions like, have prices dropped? What policies and procedures have been implemented as a result of COVID? And what are my personal predictions for the future? So Onyx, carry along and let's get right into the video. One thing I can really appreciate is that experiencing COVID has really forced the real estate industry to accelerate the implementation of technology. Agents are forced to be much more creative Buyers are looking at properties very, very thoroughly and analyzing them online before they choose to go ahead, look at a property and make an offer. And we'll just have to see week by week how this develops. Are buyers still looking at homes? Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, there was about 150 detached residential sales since April 1st in just Toronto and the York region. Although, of course, the number of sales has dropped very significantly, all which will be included at the end of the video. So be sure to stay tuned as I'll have some graphs and reports you may find helpful. So companies have put in policies in place in order to facilitate showing and facilitate buying and selling in this pandemic. And let's take a look at what I mean. So if you were to go ahead and look at a property, you would have to essentially go by this showing procedure, which says prior to attending the property, you are required to confirm that nobody has traveled outside of Canada in the past two weeks. No one attending the property has tested positive and no one attending the property has exhibited any symptoms. Further, you have to ensure that prior to touching the lockbox or the door code that you practice safe hygiene by disinfecting your hands or wearing gloves. Otherwise, prior to entering the property, you're advised to limit touching as much as possible. All the interior lights are left on. Nobody uses any washrooms. And for additional family members or anybody that is not a decision maker is not to see the property and are encouraged to look at the property through photographs and virtual tour. I am very impressed in the way that showings are being coordinated. Let's keep in mind that although sellers may not want buyers in their homes, a lot of buyers are very cautious too. So buyers who are entering properties, they're calling and saying, Mike, so you know, I'll be wearing a mask and I'll be wearing gloves. Now where things get very interesting is where COVID clauses are beginning to be implemented in offers themselves. And what's happening is, especially if it's a tenant occupied property, the sale is very, very difficult to coordinate. And the reason why is because tenants can rightfully agree not to show the property. As shown in this offer over here, this one page of the offer has clauses that are particular to the COVID situation. For example, here, in the event that the tenant disagrees to leave the property because the COVID quarantine is in effect, then they're allowed to do so the closing date, so the move-in date would just be postponed to a future period. But if the quarantine is such that it's 60 days after the closing, then the buyers and the sellers could have the right just to get out of the transaction and basically escape from the deal. And then otherwise, instead of the usual practice of the seller dropping off the key with the lawyer, they are advised just to leave it in the lockbox for the buyer then to pick up themselves. What agents are doing, especially if we've sold a number of properties between January, February, and the beginning of March, we are trying to move the move-in dates earlier because we never know what could happen. We don't know if the banks could potentially shut down or how severe this could be. So for all of our sellers that have move out dates of like June the 1st or June the 30th or even in July, we're advising them that if the buyer is comfortable with it, then we advise you just to bring the move-in date earlier. And as long as the buyer still wants the property and the seller still wants to move out, then there is no issue. Let's now take a look at the stats. I'm very excited because we have all the numbers reported from March 2020. Although what the problem is, is that the numbers from March 1st to 14th are very different than they were from March 15th to the 31st. Although we have the first quarter here, we can see that sales nicely trended upwards from January to March, up from February, March by 10.4%. Similarly, with active listings started at 7,772 in January and in March, it was 10,676 active listings. That's up 21.1% from February. And the months of inventory, which is a sign of a buyer's market, a seller's market, and the overall market strength is at 1.3. Not as good as it was in February, although better in January. And then the average price, you can see here that it was very similar to what it was in February 2020 at 903000 during the month of March. But what you don't see here is that the market really changed from March 15th to March 31st. So although you're seeing the average price being at 903000 over from the period of March 15th, to March 31st, the average price was at 862,000. Although this number 
is still significantly higher than it was in March 2019. In March 2019, prices were 10.5% lower. So with respect to the average price, only time will really tell. Although I've not really seen the market suffer too much, just that there have been less sales under the $1.5 million mark. Now, as we monitor the change in the average price on a week by week basis, it just becomes very important to understand that the change in the average price will be different based on the style of property and the area. For example, condominium sales may be hurt more and that's because a lot of buildings are now declining showings. You're just essentially not able to go to the building. You have to look at pictures. Whereas if it's somebody who's looking to buy land and pay cash, that transaction can be coordinated a lot more smoothly. Of course, I look forward to keeping you updated. If you enjoyed this video, then please do subscribe, click the like button and be sure to comment. I love reading your comments. And if there's a particular topic you'd like me to address in a future video, then that would really be helpful too. Otherwise, it's Mike with eXp Realty. I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you.